sound of the order and the chaos of the universe. Well, it's like a code, you know, music is, is like an energetic code. Music is, I think, it is strangely even a mystery to people that make it. And it is, in a sense, kind of a piece of, of magic. So, in fact, there are different parts of the brain that are involved in processing many elements of music. There's parts that are processing pitch and rhythm and harmony. And according to Oliver Sacks, more of the brain is involved in perception and response to music than to language or anything else. I think that's astonishing. In fact, if you start doing these brain imaging studies as a consequence of this, you can start to tell the difference between musicians and non-musicians because the changes in their brain are so large you can observe them with the naked eye alone. You cannot say that of mathematicians, and you can't say that of visual artists, but you can say it of musicians. Closer to our heart, rhythm. And that's something that's everywhere. So that's, an, that's a universal. Exactly how we use rhythm is different from culture to culture. But the idea of taking sound, connecting it to movements, uh, doing something together, syncing up with two people, um, that's universal. And so that certainly reflects something about the way our brain is wired up. Our brain is listening to the sound and extracting some kind of time and regular pulse from the sound, music. So we're trying to understand where that happens in the brain, how that comes to be, how we're able to create a sense of beat, and then why and how that's connected to our movements so tightly. Why we dance, for example. So we're looking at auditory cortex, which is the first destination for information about sound into the cortex. The auditory regions of the brain are actually located, uh, looking at my head on the side, in what's called temporal cortex. And that would show up here in these sensors. We actually see a modulation of how the brain responds to sound depending on how you hear a beat in music. So where you hear the beat in music actually affects perhaps how you hear things. So, I mean, the traditional view has always been a kind of stimulus response view um, that we take in information about the world through our senses, we make some picture decision making, and then we actually act on that. Really, the better way to think of the brain rather than this linear progression from stimulus to response is just, you know, an enormous series of loops. Higher brain regions reach down into primary auditory cortex and, and modify how things actually sound to us. So, when you're listening to music, hearing the beat, uh, depending on where the, you hear the beat, the, the music can change completely. That, that difference is not happening out in the world, that's happening entirely in our brain. Sure, the auditory system connects to the motor system. This is what lets us listen to sound and dance along. But what about the idea, could the motor system be connecting back into the auditory system? Um, and there certainly is evidence for this that's, that's growing. Uh, so our idea is that perhaps it's the motor system that's going back and influencing how we hear the sound. You know, in a sense, how we move can affect how we hear. 